שלום חברים, שלום חבר שלי, שלום אבדיאל בן לוי, שלום to Zion Lex, שלום ברודרס וסיסטרס, right here, here, here. This is a video that, you know, a word that we wanted to share. Not so much the video, but this is like a little vlog here, and we just caught something that um, Zion Lex, brother Zion Lex, Hebrew, Israelite, black Yehudi, you know, Zion Lex Abdil Ben Lewi is doing on his channel, breaking down this Garfield, you know, <laughs> this Garfield so-called book over four years, then this Garfield book exposed. He says, and go through it chapter by chapter. We just said in a previous video, speaking about his Garfield right, um, um, like did the Exodus ever happen, you know, and going into like the Bible Chronicles, the book of Chronicles specifically, based on some things that he said in public and we heard him say basically the same thing over and he read certain quotes from his book just to back it up. So it wasn't to talk about so much the book in itself, but um, after checking out um, a portion of his uh 20 something at a 22 25 part he's gonna go through each chapter you know like a commentary on the different chapters you know in this particular so-called book this suit i think it's called pseudo scholarship on trial that's the name of it very good name very very good name there bro um ahi ah shelly um pseudo scholarship namely the garfield or so-called brother not so much our brother, but Brother Garfield. Because he's going against the, you know, the Achim. You know, he's going against the the brothers. Going against the Hebrews. And going against the Israelites. The black Israelites or the Hebrew Israelites. Some likes to say black Hebrew Israelites, the BHIs. But we know where that really comes from. Yes, that might be a descriptor. But that's not the description that the brothers use to call themselves. Now, when we say we the black Jews... Of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, you know the Society LOJS.org. Check us out there, LOJS.org. Also, the Rastafari Podcast Radio and Rastafari Sabbatical Podcast Radio, the Discipleship Radio that we have on the Blog Talk, um, Monday to Saturdays. Mondays is ten thirty. Every other day is ten to one a.m. Be sure to call in, call in, call in, call in calling before the 12, you know, the 12 midnight hour right there, 515-602-9761, 515-602-9761. We mentioned the links right there because we went through some big attacks, you know, some attacks against um, channels that we had up there for years, over like 40,000 subscribers, you know, regular you know, regular dissemination of knowledge, Torah portion, you know, the Torah readings, you know, Torah portion by Torah portion, going to certain details, so you get to answer as many questions as, you know, we had the time and opportunity to both research and record. And it's good to see other brothers out there who, as we observe their work and see their content, have consistently been giving high quality content for free out there. One of them is Brother Zion Lex. Now, there may be certain areas, of course, even among brothers, even, even the closest of brothers, that we may disagree on certain areas and just maybe just need to seat up, sit down and reason it out or, or go on a, you know, a, a call conference, a chat or the, the blog talk, the podcast and just reason. Come, come, come. Let us reason. However, it was Zion Lex's... Um, addressing the Kemetic and the so-called consciousness community on Sarnetta's uh, platform concerning, you know, the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian scholarship. And the brother really has applied himself to not just the Torah teachings, the Torah and the Hebrew teachings, and also, I think, five times, you know, five times published author of his books. Um, now I want to get his, I want to check out his books and everything, seeing that he has some books out there. As many of the Chabarim know, you know, we've been publishing and also republishing, reprinting some old documents that are like the copyrights have already lapsed and so forth and so on. There's a particular law is there where taking advantage of those, we've been able to reprint and republish out of circulation documents. Some of us don't mind the PDFs. 
you know, the PDFs is good for a quick point of reference, but something about having the book, something about just the book, you know, the book and the scrolls is one of the most important probably inventions ever for, you know, the sons of men, the children of humanity, but just to heal up Zion Lex, just to do this more formally. I was going to do that then on one of our old channels, you know, a Rastafari sabbatical channel where we had a lot of our videos there, our videos and other videos, but it came under such a heavy attack that when we saw what he was doing on the side of the platform going into the um, the hieroglyphic um, linguistics of the hieroglyphics, some called the metuneta, the metuneta, all depends on how ones and ones enunciate that, but seeing his high level of scholarship to prove Yisrael, Israel, biblical, scriptural, actual, our ancestors, Israel, in Egypt, right, in Mitzrayim, and, um, you know, just bringing forth the facts and the evidence of it, you know, we said, Chan, we have to say something, this brother has, at least from our observation, I just come a long way, but we all have grown, you know, or should have grown, and to see, not just the growth of him, but he applied himself not just to the Torah and the teachings being a, a Yehudi, you know, like we the black Jews of Harlem from that particular tradition, the commandment keepers congregation of the living God, that particular community right there, um, Elohim Chaim community, but then applying himself to the ancient Egypt and the Kemetic scholarship and learning the Metuneta, as they call it, or the ancient Egyptian glyphs, Something that many of the ones who call themselves scholars within the unconsciousness, I mean, the black con con consciousness community, many of them have admitted that they cannot do. I mean, even Dr. Ben, you know, um, I would say Hashem bless his soul, although there's some question, you know, question about where he actually stood on his faith, seeing that, you know, being a scholar and out there and certain things, you know. Not to get into the good doctor right there, because there's that book that he has on We the Black Jews, Witness to the White Jewish, I think, Race Myth. That's a book that we have continually pushed for its um, historical gathering of like news clips, articles, historical information that it's hard to find all in one place. That particular book is one place right there to find it. First had caught up with some of the brothers um, speaking and reasoning back when he had Kemet on trial, roughly around that time. I think he was one of the only ones that was supposed to speak on that platform. Don't know the exact reason. Perhaps he can enlighten I, enlighten I and I and us to the, the reasons being that he did not, you know, show up there. I would love to have seen his presentation then. He was like a real peacemaker. He says, blessed Ashrei, you know, are the peacemakers, you know, in that whole controversy there between those who are pushing, you know, the Kemetic and the ancient Egyptian doctrine and those who were about the scriptures, the Bible, and our true, you know, our true story, our true history, our true identity. We, the once lost, now found black and brown people of the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel. So here, here is just an opportunity for us to say a few words right here and to encourage those in our cipher, in our circle, and in the interconnected ciphers and circles to check out both his Facebook but also his YouTube channel. I think he has a Patreon channel as well. Now, there's certain things that we would love to sit down and reason with him about. You know, his perspective on certain things concerning Ethiopia, his imperial majesty. We found out that, I think, his father... Um, is or was, I think, I think he still is a Rastafari, is a Rastafari, but he has chosen, you know, um, Yehudinet, as we say in the Royal Amharic, you know, he's chosen, you know, we the black Jews, that part of our collective <laughs> eponymous ancestors, that part of our collective um, history, our story. Now, we being Rastafari hold to those roots. So when we say we the black Jews, of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and we, the Rastafari Jews, speaking about the Yehudim, you know, holding on to that aspect of our culture, our history, in spite of, you know, the whitewash, whether by, you know, the European, the Ashkenazi, the Slavic Jews, or whether by the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. But now, this whole Garfield 
you know, the Scarfield book that many people have been waiting for, some have said that would not come out, has finally come out. And we've been checking certain videos, you know, watching and listening to certain videos where he's been speaking about his own book and, you know, how this book is, uh, the Hebrews going to be on the run and, and, and he's going to destroy, you know, the Bible believers, faith and, you know, the Hebrew is like faith and how, you know, some of his Jamaican Rastafari brothers will be upset with him. Well, I'm Rastafari. I'm maybe, uh, what, a, 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 a Negro, a North American, Black American. Some would say Yankee, but Yankee don't apply to us. We try to warn some of our Jamaican brothers that Yankee, that's, that's a whole false concept, you know. You know, that my people are from below the Mason-Dixon line. Now, Geechee and Gullah, and the Geechee and the Gullah connects with Ethiopia, with Africa, and even with the Hebrew and the Israelite tradition at its very roots, right, if you really know the truth. One thing I've been wondering about is whether the whole thing with Gaza and Gully that they have going on, um, you know, down in um, Benjamite where, where, where Jaman, Yaman, you know, where many of the brothers in Jamaica are, like ones like Movado, Hail Up, Hail Up, you know, whether there's any connection, that whole Gully, you know, the Gully aspect, and then we are the Gullahs, the Gullahs and the Geechee, but the Gullah, you know, and then we have the Gala. Right? Although many of the modern Oromos, nowadays Oromos, they take that as a pejorative, as an insult. This is where like many of our researchers, and it's brothers like this and a few others out there that really get to these sort of details and also are linked to the same roots. So we are a Rastafari Yehudi, right? and we are Rastafari Yehudim. Right, the Torah studies. When we say the teaching of His Majesty, that word of Gormawi Negus Neges of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, that word of His Imperial Majesty, Hashem, that says he was asked, "What was his advice to young people?" And he says his advice to all, right, is to fulfill the Ten Commandments. So we've been about reminding those who call themselves Rasta and Rastafari and so-called Hail Selassie, as they would say, of the real teaching of His Majesty, that Judeo, as ones might call it, Judeo-Christian roots, that Hebraic and the Israelites of Ethiopia roots. So to see that our brother Abdiya, right, Abdiya ben Lewi has really been going in, aka Zion Lex, and then we saw a, a part of this video that maybe with a response to, probably a response to Zion Lex's um, pseudo-scholarship on trial going in on Garfield, you know, somebody's bro, somebody's brother Garfield, <laughs> cartoonish, ain't it? You know, feed me, feed me, feed me. That's what it's all about. It's all about getting that bag, and I think that Zion Lex, he really, him and the next brother, sorry, bro, sorry, ah, don't know your name, but the next brother that he had on his, huh? Mikael, thank you, thank you. Isha Sheli, you know, reminded me that it's um, Mikael, you know, brother Mikael. Two brothers were going chapter by chapter, just giving a, not so much a review, but just going through it. Because I was hearing Garfield talk about how he's, um, you know, there was one price on the book, there was a pre-order on the book, and now it's going up on the price of the book. You know, sometimes people do a lot of things to impress their family, maybe their wives and the women. You know, you do, you're doing this so-called consciousness work, and people ask you, well, you know, have you really made any money from this? You put in a lot of time. Like, if you was working on a 9 to 5, you would really get some paycheck, but what are you really getting out of this? Maybe this is one way of him getting a bag, starting a controversy. But regardless of what the intent is or the motivation behind said intent is, is it's very, very dangerous, right? And this is no threat. I'm saying it's a very dangerous thing, right? It's a very dangerous thing, right, to put out such disinformation. We did a video talking about what he said that the Exodus never happened. He goes into the book of Chronicles and say that it's from the book of Chronicles and his so-called, you know, dropout studies of the book of Chronicles. He says this is where he um, really... Um, I can say pinpoints the epicenter of proving his 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 premise. He has this premise that he's not a Bible believer, and he thinks that the Bible and the, the Abrahamic faiths and traditions, so forth and so on. Many of us still hold to the fact that 
he's seeking to cause a controversy twofold. One, to discourage this rising movement of the consciousness of black and brown people as the B'nai Yisrael, as the sons and children of Israel, right? And he is really just the, you could say, like, it's like, like the puppet. You have the puppet, right? And you have the puppeteer, right? So he's the puppet of this. He keeps talking about his academic and scholarly and this modern consensus of opinion. And before I heard him say it, I said, he is going with the right now consensus. And then he said it on the, on the side and the, He's going with the consensus of opinion right now. If the consensus changes, he's just going with the majority so-called opinion, right? At the same time, talking to us as black folks that this whole thing of the Bible and the scriptures and Israel, in his opinion, in his subjective opinion, is something that's holding us back and doesn't have anything good to do for us. And then finds out that he actually went to school to study to be a Christian minister, but like the community college, he dropped out. Now, listen, not everybody and not all of us may have finished college or our higher education. You know what I mean? Some have, you know. But when you're faking the funk for a bag, you know, because he keeps raising the price on this book and everything. We was even saying to some of those, you know, with us that we're going to get, you know, seek to get a copy so we can speak more informed about it. This is until we checked out Zion Lex, the first part. And I'm sure they're going to try to flag you, bro. So, you know, be on your P's and Q's. I'm beginning to think that was ones like him and others and some of his, um, his academic, scholarly, archaeological um, consensus that really attacked our channel, be it as it may. You know, and no doubt, you know, that it may come here so forth and so on because it seems as though he is he is caping to the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and the European Jewish opinion because they've been trying to take down and stop this rise, this rise, this rise of the black messiahs, messiahs, right? And let me spell it because some are not too good with that, um, you know, the grammar and punctuation and being so-called scholarly when we say messiahs not just the rise of the black messiah as um Edgar J Edgar Gay Edgar J Hoover you know said you know and did in the whole COINTELPRO but it's really about the messiahs as it says in the book and the prophecy of um Obadiah Obadiah where it says in Obadiah that saviors you know how saviors shall rise up you know to where was it Mount Edom Edda. So who is he really defending? I mean, there's a lot of things that he has said, speaking about Garfield. And this is not the place for it, but to see that Zion Lex, Abdiel Ben Lewi, is going through it, you know, chapter by chapter, you know, chapter by chapter, and really going through it. And he said something, he said, so that you wouldn't have to, you know, you could pay a portion of what you pay for his book on some of the other books that he is pointing to and there's some very good books of scholarship so when you can see that brothers and sisters check out um zion lex and let him know that you know ross iadonis yadin sent you loj society the line of judah society sent you just to you know share that love right there and support as we also going to seek to support and check out i think we saw about two or three of the titles of the books very interesting one about dna the Star David controversy, 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 um, and some other said matters. But what really was very impressive was how he had studied and really sharpened his skills concerning so-called what they would call like Egyptology or Kemetic science, Kemetic studies doing what a lot of the leading names and ones and ones out there who are referred to as, you know, comedic scholars or some who hold themselves out as priests or whatever like that of this shrine or that shrine. And yes, we're referring to Jabari because, you know, when you come after our brothers, it's something in the Torah, you know, Torah direction instruction tells us that even if we have, a, you know, a difference amongst us as, as Yisrael, as Israel, and then ones who clearly might be actually Israel, but they seek to be Egyptian or Ben Mitzri, you know, Kemetic or whatever, are coming after our brothers for standing on the square of Torah and on the square of the teaching. 
you know, going against Moshe Robaino. You know, we don't really, we don't tolerate it, you know. And this is one reason why we're speaking up. But if originally, originally, we sought just to say, um, give thanks, you know. Also, he had shared some certain documentation, historical documentation concerning the one named Abba Bivens, Abba Ben Yomi, you know, um, concerning Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. You know, and this year and this season, we've been elected by the the membership. We're talking about the real membership. There's a whole thing we need to reason about with the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, because we really need those those who are in the spirit of the federation. Because you have to remember that the federation was was originally started and supported by ones and ones like us that are holding to this. Torah, Scripture, Judaic, Israel identity, the Israelites of Ethiopia connection, they were the ones from back in the Roaring Twenties nearly, you know, a hundred years ago, right? We're talking about a hundred years ago, a, a, a centenary, you know, a century, it's a centenary ago that were coming out of the, you know, the Moorish, um, the Moorish uh, Zion, Zionist, you know, temple, you know, um, this is before the more science, not the Moabite thing right there. That's a whole other thing. But the commandment keepers, that's how we like to refer to them, because after the coronation of the king of kings of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, circa 1930, you know, this is when they went from that Moorish identity. Right? I don't know if I have any, 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 any pics on them. Let me see if I can just share. That's one of his books right there. Um, let me see if we have it right here. I'm going to make this a little short, but yeah, here we go right here. This is what we're talking about. The Moorish Zionist Temple of Moorish Jews. This right here, I think that is Rabbi Mordecai Herman, if I'm correct, Mordecai Herman. You know, sometimes seeing his picture and then thinking about Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthews, there's some similarity, but this is Rabbi Mordecai right here 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 now it's after this time this is like circa 1920s if you look behind here as we did in another video you see what people say that's the israeli flag but check this out this picture based on the photographer the photographer has their pictures out there and i think even here it tells you down here is this right here 1920 you see right there 1920 that might be the ad address right there Right, Vanderbilt, something like right there. I, don't, I can't read it too well, but down there, 1920. This is like from the 1920s. The 1920s, the, the state of Israel was only established in 1948. And they even have some pictures of some of the ideas for what the flag, the proposed flag of the state of Israel would be. We had done a video, some of you might have seen it. We have to kind of get that re uploaded out there. We're also working on building up our Patreon as well Rastafari sabbatical patreon as well um they have proposed flags you know with the star of david different concepts different designs right and here you see the very form of it that would finally be chosen and if we recall correctly it was not one of their original one of their original designs. This was not one of their original designs. They go through each design and say, okay, this is a design in 19 something, and this is a design of a potential flag in 19, uh, maybe 30 something, or somewhere in the 30s, or maybe even the 20s. But here you see the flag that would be adopted first being um, flown by we the black Jews. Right? Ethiopian Hebrews, commandment keepers, Israelites of Ethiopia, right here. And so we went into like a whole video to basically say that it seems as though they adapted or adopted or co-opted the very flag that the black Jews, we the black Jews, our ancestors were utilizing. You know, now some people take that to be offensive, but it's just the truth of the matter. We're showing you the historical, the archival facts right here. Here he has a little beamer right there you know like a little podium right there this is also another unique picture you can't see it very clear in this right it's a little over um overexposed it seems like the picture is a little overexposed but you can see right here that's 1929 right 1929 on the side 1929 now the state of israel came about in 1948 so that means why would they have a flag if they didn't have a state <laughs> but see we the black jews of harlem Right, we're on it. 
right? We're on it, flying that flag right there, there, there. This, so this is another picture where you can see it right here. You can see it much clearer over here, all right? So we'll try to share that particular video again. So this community that was known as the Moorish Zionist Temple of Moorish Jews, the point that has to be made is this is before the Moorish Science Temple. The Moorish Science Temple. The next thing about the Moorish Science Temple is that it is said from some reliable sources, and let's see, was it, was it, um, uh, who's the brother, Wesley Muhammad? I think on one of Wesley Muhammad's site, we got some family that is, you know, Ethiopian family that like kind of linked with that particular movement there, but um, he said in some of the documentation we've seen from him and some of his research that um, it is said that Timothy, Timothy Drew, AKA later on to be known as Noble Drew Ali, his mother or his parents went to and attended the Moorish Zionist temple. And some say that it's because of the sound of Moorish Zionist. Zionist may sound like scientists or Zion science, you get it? So this is very interesting, that connection, something that needs to be sussed out a little bit better and kind of looked into you know that's a kind of a theory right there but some presented as evidence based on their research we've only seen the conclusion of their research not really looking to all the exhibits where they have come to that conclusion but based on the history it fits it doesn't contradict anything that is publicly and easily and readily known so we point this out because this is our shared roots right here right and this is the real roots of Rastafari and Rastafari doesn't come from Jamaica. Rastafari comes from Ethiopia. I have to say that on the record. And, you know, that might be something that some of our brothers and, and you know, the brethren might not, you know, so easily like, you know. But here, this is um, Father's Day mix right here, Caribbean style. This is Zion Lex with his, I believe this is his father here. He had mentioned that his father is a Rastafari, right? And he is of, we could say, was called and historically black Jew, the black Jews, like the black Jews of Harlem from that particular tradition. You know, we could say a more orthodox tradition, right? So here, check out some of the works of Zion, Lex, and oh, just, just one other thing. When we had caught the particular video that Sarnetta had there where he had um, um, Garfield, feed me, feed me, you know, he had Garfield, Fat Cat, you know, Garfield, he had Garfield on his platform. And in the title, it was talking, I forget the exact title, but what stood out is he, he said lying, lying, you know, like lying Lex. I think Tazariak of One West of ISUPK, he'll up to Tazariak, but moreover, one of the captains that we have been in conversation. Hopefully we'll keep it up, though we're not on the radio show together. Hail up to Captain Azania. Captain Azania. This is Ras Ayodonis Tafari, the Lion of Judah Society, L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. He was on the platform by Lawrence Davis. You know, the elect member, elect member this year, duly elected elect member, Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. The real one. The real one. You know, because there's a lot of diversions going on out there. You know, as we have in my father's house, there are many mansions. It's necessary that there be, you know, some divisions and everything so one can see who is really true, right? But when we caught the fact that they were dissing, you know, trying to diss his name, even Tazarik said, thanks for not messing up my name, not messing with my name, right? You know, I said, Chan, I didn't even record that video just to hail up the brother. He must be under a lot of, you know, you know, they're trying to like snipe, snipe at him you know, from different angles and everything. And part of it is because he put in the work to show and prove, right? Show and prove, even when reasoning with Jabari, a so-called comedic priest and everything of some comedic shrine or whatever, he had to admit that, well, he don't really know the Metuneta and the Egyptian glyphs. It was his wife that know it. I mean, it's just like, you're gonna be monolingual, monolingual, Brother Zion Lex, you know, you, I, I think you pick up on that as well, right? You know, because this brother's a scholar right here. You're going to be monolingual 
and then speaking to ones and ones who have shown and proved both in their communities as well as on the so-called YouTube and YouTube streets, so to speak, you know, that they have put in the real work of scholarship, knowing the language, the linguistics, studying it, even the brother learning the hieroglyphs, the metuneta, and actually studying it and being able to break it down and explain it and prove that the Hebrews right, were in Egypt or Mitzrayim or what some of y'all call Kemet, right, and that the exodus did happen. So now Garfield has to hustle and, and bring out his particular book and he finally brings it out four years later. You know, well, some people say it was more like 10 years later, but like four years later. And then to have the brother go through the first chapter and say, wait, this brother begins a, a, a sentence, begins a paragraph with because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. You know, that's some stuff from what... Was that the Wizard of Oz or something? But that's what it is. It's a deception. We view these ones and ones. I got to say this just to be right and exact with, you know, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, you know, with the Holy One, blessed be He. They're like Sanbalat and Tobiah, right? Tobijah, Tobijah and Sanbalat that we find in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. They were ones and ones who were trying to thwart, like throw off like stumble and fumble what the returned black Jews out of Babylon were doing to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that the Babylonians had torn down when they had took many of the Judeans, the Judahites, into captivity and rebuild the temple of Jerusalem, right? And it was a big work. It's like this big work that the Israelites collectively, regardless of whatever, you could say camp or... or um, mansion they are in, we still are in one father's house, right? Because the basic, the basic of our identity, right? Our identity, our, our, our language, you know, our, our name, and with the scriptural and historical proof that proves that these black people, so-called Negroes and coloreds, all these bywords are to cover up our identity. Then they have one, one who is our color but not our kind. And to add insult to injury, he gets on Garfield. Garfield, that is. He gets on his platform and say, oh, the Rasta man, you know, Rasta, his, his Rasta brothers, his Rasta brothers in Jamaica, his Jamaican Rasta brothers are going to be upset with him. Mm. Because of what he is, what he is saying right there. I mean, the truth, the truth, if the truth be told, the Rastafari, right, especially the historical Rastafari, are the only real Israelites on the Isle in Jamaica. Those who identify and have identified. In fact, as we mentioned with Captain Azania when we was on Ross Lawrence Davis, um, what you know about God and His chosen people. We actually had stated there on the record that from our coming into the knowledge and growing in Rastafari and researching, we found that the Rastafari, we were Israelite before we identified with the elect, which we call Rastafari. So I say that once again on the record because we have published things over the years and many people have it here and there, although we have grown and some things have not so much changed but been refined. That is still there as part of, we say, our legacy, you know, of information and documentation. So we haven't changed on that. Some people think like, oh, you're trying to be Jewish or you're trying to be, you know, a Jew or something like that. No, we, we, we be who we be. You know, that's just the reality of it. You know, but it was the Rastafari from our research who were the first ones like Sam Brown and others which had like three to like five points. And one of their first points is that we black people are the lost children, the lost sheep, the lost tribes of Israel. We black people over here in the Caribbean, in the Americas and throughout this Western world are the Israelites of the Bible who went into captivity because of, you know, the breaking the covenant, pointing to the curses for disobedience. That was my first introduction to the core teaching 
of Rastafari and then the connection of his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie and the Israelites of Ethiopia carrying that kingdom government authority because of the word of scripture and prophecy that David would never lack a man to sit on his throne and thus the throne of David, the Ark of the Covenant. We know that, you know, that fat cat has spoken against that too. But if it's anything like what we're hearing about this book, we're still going to seek to get a copy. Um, you know, um, <laughs> Salicha, Salicha Abdiel, you know, I know you said, you know, ones don't have to, you know, pay this exorbitant price because he keeps raising the price. He's really trying to get this bag. I don't know what he's trying to do with this bag. Probably trying to impress some of his near and dear loved ones because all that, um, what they call it again, um, that he was doing that first. He was doing that credit, you know, um, credit, you know, helping people out with their credit and everything, their credit rating and so forth and so on. And then he started to, you know, push up himself as some sort of a scholar. First thing, Garfield, you, you need to, first of all, not even just learn another language. Be a little better with the use of the English language, especially in writing. You know, have somebody who really know English kind of look over it because, you know, if what Brother Zion Lex has said, and no doubt, we don't have a doubt about what he has said, you know, you know, and people say, well, grammatical things, how are we going to look at grammatical things, so forth and so on. Well, to whom more is given, more is required. I just say it like that, you know, the Achim. You know, Achim, Shelley, you know what I'm saying right there. But here, you can check this out right here, here, here. You know, Biblical Hebrew, learn Biblical Hebrew, right? The brother there, the elder, you know, um, Shaka Amos, you know. I mean, even he was saying certain things that was interesting, that was kind of like, so to speak, not out of pocket, but, you know, at least out of the pocket, you would think, because he was defending a lot of the Kemetic and kind of the house of conscience thing and well those who know how they do know how they do but to my brother Zion Lex right and in honor of the commandment keepers the congregation of Elohim Chaim the congregation of the living God you know I and I salute and I salute the eye and give thanks for the good work going to check out the other parts of um, the pseudo scholarship on trial Part one, fire, fire, fire. Aish, Aish, Tamid. Aish, Alehem. Aish, Aish, Alehem. Aish, Alehem. Ach, Shelly. Chaber, Shelly. Aish, Alehem. You know, yeah, man. Keep up the good work, bro. Yes, I. Rastafari. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Yes, I. Look more, look more.